evening and welcome to the Royal Opera House, both to our audience here in the close studio upstairs, welcome to all of you, and to all of you worldwide watching wherever you are on our live stream via YouTube. I'm Kirsten O'Brien. Now tonight's insight is all about Georges Balanchine's sparkling ballet, Jewels. We're taking a peek behind the curtain as the Royal Ballet prepare to mark the 50th anniversary of his iconic work. Jules was created by Georges Balanchine for the New York City Ballet in 1967, and it's considered to be the first three-act abstract ballet. Inspired by a visit to a New York jewellery store, each of the three movements draws on a different gemstone and composer for its inspiration and sound. Foray for emeralds, Stravinsky for rubies, and Tchaikovsky for diamonds. So, tonight we will see Royal Ballet principal dancers Sarah Lamb, Marianella Nunes, Stephen McRae and Tiago Suarez in rehearsal. We are also going to have a close-up look at some of the dazzling costumes. They really are beautiful. And we're going to hear from Patricia Neary and Elise Bourne about what it was like to work with the legendary Georges Balanchine. Now, Jules is going to be on stage here at the Royal Opera House from the 1st of April. And, this is good news, Tuesday the 11th of April, you can see it in your local cinema wherever you are in the world. So that's the date to remember, Tuesday the 11th of April as well. In fact, let's take a look. impressive doesn't it so that date again tuesday the 11th of april and to find your nearest cinema screening visit roh.org.uk forward slash cinema uh, we want to hear from you tonight by the way if you're on twitter we would love to hear from you we're using the hashtag roh jewels that's hashtag roh jewels now i have been joined by the balanchine ambassador and stager patricia neary very lovely to Thank see you. you so we're going to hear later on about your time working yes. with george uh, so we'll leave that for now but what are you going to do for us well today we're going to do just the pas de deux the second movement of rubies and we're going to have sarah lamb and stephen mcrae do it and we've had very little rehearsal time so but they know it very well they've danced it quite a bit in the company and they're wonderful in it so i'm thrilled to be able to show you this and i'll stop a few times and give corrections which is my nature <laughs> <laughs> you know but maybe not a lot but i'll try you know to keep it down so that's what I we're doing let today. you get on with it i should and mention we've got two pianists we've got rob clark and philip cornfield over there as well lovely to see you both thank you Pat. We'll let you thank you very it. much thank you so, Sarah, and oh, there you are. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we'll do the, uh, we'll start at the beginning of the pas de deux. Let them come out. stop already but that's I'm so sorry just just quickly I just wanted to say one thing be careful on this first one that you roll through that foot you're not you're not quite doing that Sarah just one more time yeah that's it that's it darling and the other thing is remember this is pointed foot behind each time so you're not doing the first one you're doing the second but not first and there we go there we go a little bit bigger the fourth position you know, both of you into that, yeah? We have to show the difference in the style in this ballet between emeralds and diamonds, just to express that to everyone. Okay, right on it. I'll just say and from the beginning. And. Three. A little faster. Up. Six. Seven. Eight. And a one.
Okay, thank you. Very good. It's all right. Uh, take two. We'll do another take on that. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Uh, just be careful when you're doing that. Da da yum puppy. Don't move. Just go straight up on point on that. Don't move the foot. You know what I mean? So it's right. Yeah, you're still slightly moving it. Just one more second more. <laughs> one and two. Go, go. That's it. Yes, that's it. That's it. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, one is back and one is front. You know, the, 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 uh, she wasn't yeah. quite, somehow she didn't, yeah, I think you should be a little bit higher on that, Stephen. And just try it once. So you go one, I, I think. Right. Well, I thought it was one back, one front, but I'll have to check my things on that. So I don't want to say it. Maybe I shouldn't be saying it live right now. <laughs> Stupid pad. Yeah. Okay, this, this step, you need to bring your back foot a little bit closer on it so you travel a bit more on that da da de the hip, hippie one. And go travel to, yeah, just still looks a little like it's not coming into the fifth position on the chasse, Sarah. And travel, that's better, that's better, because you know it doesn't move that much, that one. Kind of it got a little bit, uh, you didn't stay on point before, for the, before the lowering of the passe, yeah? And go. One and two, yeah, sorry, one, two, and chasse, three and four, and hip, six. Yeah, stay on point. The back foot stays on point. Yeah, that's what's going wrong on that. Then we have, after that, attitude was good, that was good, going under. Yeah, remember that when you're doing, after the devote front where you have her foot, you need, keep your knee in front so that we see it. If it's behind, it's better to have the foot in the front in the passe so that I see him manipulating. It's very balancing this. Yeah, now easy passe, keep it forward. That's it, push it back, yeah. So the boy kind of pushes her leg into the penche. You can lower there, yeah? Easy. That's better, that's better, yes, very good, okay. Let's go into his variation. That was excellent. Except let's try the pirouette, because then we'll feel better. Do the devil play second. <laughs> it's all about feeling good. Yeah. Yeah, hips. Can you give me from the hips? The, yes. the wiggle, yeah. And, and arabesque. Easy, take your time. Middle, and up, good. Very good. Is it a little quick? Sorry, I just missed a, a beat. A beat sorry. Don't worry. I won't be counting it out loud in the public, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Like some people have done. I've been in a performance where somebody did that. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Stephen, very good, the variation. Just that, that pirouette that you did in front of us here. Uh, as you were going around, the leg, left leg got a little bit. On the, on the die, you know what I mean? Because you, you were trying to do a lot. Yes, 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 oh yes, show, show, good. Okay, um, Sarah, don't worry, that was really good. Uh, you wanna go from the 10, we can. So let's go from the, uh, if I just say one or and, can you do it from there, Rob? I'll give her 10 before. Right, and.
I know what it is now. It's my fault for not expressing that. So when you do this, you should turn in the passe when, instead of going before that. Now stay on point. That's right. That's right. Now turn. That's it. That's it. You know what I mean? You're actually turning too soon, so you're facing that wall. Yeah? They haven't, sorry, I just want to explain, because we haven't corrected anything or rehearsed it, so we've just gone over it. So I wanted to express that because they're so good, but um, just to say, uh, they're doing it sort of with, uh, I call it on ice. It's a, you know, <laughs> shall, we try, shall we try from the beginning of that then? That was very good up to there. Da 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 dum. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And one. Yes. Not stay on point. Yes, that's right. And a one. And a pelvis, good. Sharp. One. And down. Keep her down, Stephen. Yes. And one. And lift up. And down. And a one. Keep the hand, that's it. Eight and a forward, two, three. Stay down, that's it. And one, two, good, three. Very good, very good. Oh, excellent, you two. Uh, so just, can I just give one, one I didn't want to stop you because it was the right motivation and you were into it, so I thought just leave it for the moment. So this was much better. Uh, fourth figure, that always works for me and for Mr. B. Uh, collapse, I, I feel it could, that she's coming up a little bit much too much in between it and it needs to be a little bit lower to me you know so it should look scary almost you know and down yes keep that's it that's it yes okay yeah well yeah 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 it, 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 it's a, it's the illusion of that it's a, a bit scary if you know what i mean which it should be and you know as you can see in this particular work there's a lot of motion in the hips and stuff that is why uh, that was Balanchine's he didn't like the word contemporary but that was what he loved when he did Stravinsky works or anything like Agon or this he used a lot of the pelvis in it yeah so that's to explain a little bit of the style in this um, so now very good very good uh, dive was excellent that was good uh, pirouette was good I think when you did the balance and this lift could have traveled a bit more and I still feel this needs to move a bit more back. It looked too small to me in the movement, you know? Yeah. 
so the lift could be a bit further. Then pirouette was a little bit late. Uh, that was that. Make sure that second is really wide, Sarah, because it looks great when you can release it. Yeah, just try that for me once, just quickly. So you're going to take her hands, aren't you? Pirouette. No. Okay, that's fine. Go on if you want to do that. One. And <laughs> never mind. No music. No. No light. One. Up and go. Lift. Yes, travel. That's it. Now go back. Travel. Travel. More. More. Yes, as much as you can on that, because it should look very exciting. Now pirouette. And fifth, good. And one, two, three, four, four. Yeah, that's good. S Stephen, I don't think you go back there. I think she does, sweetie. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up with her. I know, I know, I know. When you, I saw you both, I thought, oh, they're going to fall over backwards. Okay. <laughs> now move, move to the side. Slowly lift that leg. That's it. Not too high. Bang. Oi! <laughs> Oh, that was scary. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that, yeah, that, that just went a little too far now. I, I, I usually, I don't get it far enough, but right now it's going a little too far. Better. Slow. Okay. Good. Very good. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, audience. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Philip. Thank you very much, Pat. And uh, thanks to our dancers as well. Sarah Lamb and Stephen McRae, and as well as that, our pianists that you saw were Philip Cornfield and Rob Clark. Thank you very much. Oh, well, we're going to hear more from Pat a little bit later on, as I mentioned. Hopefully, we'll get some stories out of her. And uh, later, we're going to see principal dancers Marianella Nunes and Tiago Suarez rehearsing at Diamonds. We do have a digital programme for Jules, by the way. Uh, let me tell you about it. It's available free. It's on our website. What you need to go is go to roh.org.uk forward slash publications. That's roh org.uk forward slash publication should be on the screen there right now uh, and use the code incidentally in capitals free jewels that's the code free jewels in capitals if you want to get hold of that well as well as its stylish and spectacular choreography jewels is of course known for its glittering costumes and i'm very excited now because we are joined by the costume supervisor alan watkins round of applause for him <laughs> Lovely to have you here. Lovely stuff. So, um, how many costumes are there in total for Jules? Do you know? I think there are six, something like 60 to 70 on stage at any one performance. And then, of course, we have more than double that uh, backstage because we have second casts. And whenever you see the ballet with a different dancer, you're not seeing the same costume. You're seeing a duplicate <gasps> of that costume so made who, for a different dancer. Who designed them then? Talk us through the designer. The designer was a fascinating woman called Barbara Karinska, and she was Russian-born, uh, Ukrainian in fact, and her career f paralleled uh, Mr. Balanchine's very much. They both emigrated to Paris, and that's where I think they first met in the early 30s, and she worked with his 1933 company in Paris. She was a costume maker at that point, and she was making costumes for other designers. Many of them were famous painters. Uh, I think Christian Berard was the first person she had to interpret the drawings of. Um, she also then emigrated to America later in the 30s, became famous in Hollywood, uh, and then when the New York City Ballet was formed, uh, she reconnected, I think, with Mr. Mr. Balanchine and became central, I think, to the costume work of that company and his choreography. Talk us through this first costume and this beautiful emeralds costume, because the difference is quite often in the skirts, isn't it? In the different pieces. There are different skirts for each of the each of the ballets, uh, representing the different history of of, of, of classical ballet, in a sense. Um, this is a reference to the Romantic ballet, uh, the the French Romantic ballet. It reminds you in shape of uh, La Sylphide or, or Giselle, I would say. Um, it's very light. Transparent, three transparent layers, different colours, so that you see a different colour when the skirt moves, not one block of green. Um, and all the jewellery, the bling, as it were, is <laughs> up there, so that it doesn't get in, in the way of the dancers. But you can see it, but it's in a place which is uh, to get the maximum impact, but with no technical problems, particularly for the men. I was going to say, with something like this that looks like it could move, is that, is that a risk, having loose, or do you try yeah, and batter it? There are elements of, of loose... 
yes, loose bits in it which give you the, the, the dynamic. And in fact, they're very, very carefully placed so that they don't, in fact, cause problems, I think, for the dancers. <laughs> I've never heard of any problems with these. Uh, most of it are nailed down quite, uh, quite seriously, but these have got a certain freedom to them, which is great on stage, of course. So you mentioned the bling. Moving on, then, to the... Uh beautiful <laughs> bling on this. This is diamonds, yes. <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, the third movement, and it's a reference to the, the classical Russian tradition um, of, of ballet. The music is Tchaikovsky. And often, for that tradition, we think of the, ballet, the tutu shape as being much more like a plate nowadays. Mm -hmm. But I think, at the, in fact, in the end of the 19th century, Mr. Balanchine would have remembered a, a skirt more like this. This smaller, I think, I suspect that's true. Uh, I know he, with Barbara Kaminska, reinvented this, sh this shape in the early 50s. Uh, and I think they called it the powder puff tutu as opposed to the pancake plate. Uh, it is constructed like a tutu in the same way with the, the nets in a similar position, but it's softer, more delicate, more feminine. In terms of the jewels, do you have loads of spares or you know, where, where do you source them from? We source them from um, Central Europe. Uh, the Czech Republic is a very good, always has been. Bohemia, the country we used to call it, was famous, and it still is. Um, and also, so we use glass jewels uh, on a lot of these costumes, and uh, we intermix them with uh, synthetic jewels. And in fact, you can't really tell which are which anymore because the synthetics have become rather good, and they stand, they have a longer life. The the glass ones will actually start to crack and break after a few years. Um, and it causes too much of a problem. So in fact, they're a mix. What you're actually looking at are a mix of glass and synthetic. So it's someone's job to painstakingly go through and check the entire bodice like this. There's a lot of work goes into making these. They, they are amongst the most skilled costumes we have been asked to make <laughs> in this house, I think. And of course, it's not only the ladies, as you're about to demonstrate. Yes, there are men in the ballet as well. Um, <laughs> and in fact, they don't disappear behind the ballerina because they've got their own bling going on as well, which yes. is very, very good. The men's costumes are all based on a really interesting structure where the sleeves are separated from the, the main tunic, which means that the guy has got plenty of movement for his arms to give him the strength and the power he needs uh, for what he has to do without actually shifting the main body of the garment. He doesn't ride up with him. It will mm -hmm. stay like a waistcoat does exactly where it should when the arm gets raised. So it's a very clever technical solution to how to do these costumes. And this is obviously rubies. That we're this is at. rubies. <laughs> <laughs> um, where, where do you store all of these costumes and how are they stored? We haven't got enough room in this theatre, big though it is, to store everything. Um, so we have a place in Wales and we have a place in Essex, much nearer London. So we're using both places, in fact, to store our costumes for the, the rather large repertoire of the Royal Ballet. And how far in advance do you get going with the costumes before preparing for an April the 1st? For before? this opening night uh, coming up shortly, I will have had about six to eight weeks to prepare it. Um, we, we refit every one of the, the costumes on the dancers, even though they may have worn them before. They may be their own costumes, but we make sure that everything is exactly as it should be, that they haven't changed all the costumes. And you're a team of how many? The, our team is its pretty large. <laughs> I would say it's about, it's about uh, 30 people dedicated to working on the costumes at the moment, but they're also dedicated to working on uh, various other ballets which are coming up, the new ones and the revivals. I have to ask, do you have a favourite costume, if you had to choose? <laughs> That's very hard. I like all three ballets, I like all three pieces of music, all three pieces of choreography, and I like all three designs. They're different. Come on, I'm pushing you, difficult. Alan. You're sitting on the fence there. I'm a Libran. <laughs> <laughs> so how ready would you say you are for the performance? We're on schedule. Yes, we're on schedule. It's a lot of work. Um, but the company are very busy, of course, because they're rehearsing a million other things. They have a world premiere, I think, coming up next week, uh, amongst a lot of other work going on always in, in this house. The dancers are the most, among, perhaps the most hard-working people um, I think I've ever worked with. And in terms of your costumes, what is the worst thing that could happen? What's the biggest nightmare for you? That it would fall off while they were <laughs> dancing. <laughs> I always say, well, at least they didn't fall off. <laughs> Well, it's been wonderful seeing them and for bringing them along this evening. Thank you very much. Round of applause well, for Alan. Thank you. Alan Watkins.
lovely stuff. Now, uh, remember, we do want to hear from you tonight, by the way. If you're on Twitter, it would be marvellous to hear from you. Don't forget to tweet. We are on hashtag ROH Jewels. That's hashtag ROH Jewels. Now, to tell us a bit more about Georges Balanchine, please welcome back Pat Neary. And also we're joined by Sarah Lamb and Elise Bourne. Hello. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> marvellous. Lovely to see you all. Thank you, ladies. Uh, so, first of all, what makes Balanchine's choreography so unique? Who would like to go with that one? Speak to us. <laughs> the musicality. Yes. The inventiveness of the patterns. For example, well, Ruby's is full and Diamond's unbelievable. Yes. The way he could take large groups or small groups of people and manipulate them and move them you didn't even know when he was creating what that would be. But if you have a chance, if you have a chance to see Jules from just a little high up in the audience, when you look down, um, I don't know how he knew. He just knew. He'd just stand up and do it. <clears throat> you didn't know exactly until it was done. And there are, there are magnificent fugues and patterns and... and um, Wow, I just go on and on. The yeah. steps, the, the lines, the relationships with the people. There's a story without having a story. The Continue. Mu the music. The musicality. Yeah. The I mean, music. on and on and on and on. These ballets never yeah. get old. They never wear out. They never look dated. That's right. Genius. He hated that word, but I'm sorry. Mm. It, he is. He is a genius. Yeah. One of a kind. We were very yeah. lucky. We were very lucky, yes. Well, I want to get on to both of your stories about that. Pat, tell me your first meeting with Palachine. How, how did you meet? What was it like? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know you were going to ask me that. That's okay. Uh, well, that, that's a... Uh, I auditioned for his company, uh, and uh, he came in the studio, and uh, I, I boldly uh, asked him if I could have a job, you know. And he knew that I wanted one, but he had a lot of tall, beautiful ladies, and... I was mm. a little heavy at the time, but he said underneath the fat, he knew there was a good <laughs> dancer. <laughs> Sorry, I have to say that because that was a famous line that I heard for many years. <laughs> underneath the fat, I knew there was a good dancer. But uh, <laughs> it was interesting because he was such a shy man, and uh, uh, it, it wasn't easy to talk to him. So it was like kind of the, the introduction, my, my first, the way I introduced myself and everything was very bold, I realize now. You know, but I was very lucky. I got in the company, September 13th, 1960. So, big day, 13th, I always said, go, that's my lucky number. <laughs> <laughs> and Elise, what about you? you I don't remember the day I got you? in, because <laughs> I, I kind of filtered in. You were in the uh, school, I, no? I, I, Well, I, I was an apprentice, and we went to Saratoga, and they needed me for some visa or something as an apprentice, and then Somebody said to me, you have to go to Dr. Kidden and get your shots. Oh, th you were and They were going in the to Russia, then. 1972. <laughs> I was eight. Um, <laughs> uh, she wasn't. They, no, I was, I was, I was 16. And um, they say, I said, I'm not going to Russia. I'm not getting oh, any were. shots. <laughs> and they said, yeah, you are, and go get your shots. I said, I'm just an apprentice. They said, no, you're in a company. Yeah, that's... Yeah. So I don't know the date because I don't even know when I, uh, it was official. Funny, but um, yeah, it's, it, those, are, those are the stories because <laughs> you never know when you're in the company. I guess <laughs> you, you know, people say I was invited by Balanchine to be in the New York. I, I don't, I don't remember getting an invitation, yeah. <laughs> and I don't remember RSVPing either. <laughs> <laughs> Same token. <clears throat> I just, it just kind of happened. But Mr. B knew everything about everyone their personal life, their families, didn't say a lot. You didn't know that he knew. But I had an older sister who was also in the company before I got in the company. Like, I have a younger, she has a younger one. Yeah, I have a younger one. You were some of the sister yeah, pairs. Sister pairs, Brother, yeah. sister, brother, a lot of sisters, a few brothers. Um, so, but he also, he loved my father because my father had worked with Fred Astaire. He was a rehearsal pianist and wrote some of that. So he knew... From the moment we started getting scholarships uh, coming to New York City for the summer course, when I was 13, my sister was 15 or 16, and coming back for the summer so he knew everything about the family immediately. Mm -hmm. 
everything. <laughs> like, I don't know how he knew that about everybody, but he just, he did. And <laughs> Sarah, what's it like hearing these stories? What does Balanchine mean to you? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I love hearing them talk. I love hearing about them. My first Balanchine ballet, I was one of the young girls in Mozartiana, and Suzanne Farrell came to stage the work, which was one of the, one of the later pieces that he I heard. was there. You were there as well? <laughs> I was there for... Um, it was the first... Serenade. At the same time? Yeah, because yeah. it was Mozartiana and Serenade. Um, Vicky Simon was there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was in the school, so I didn't remember. <laughs> but you don't remember me I, either. Well, so because... Was... <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't remember... Yeah, work... You must have been in the Serenade, yeah? no? Later, min yeah, oh, later, no, no. yeah. But we were the little girls. Oh, yeah. Titanic, oh, she was too little. Oh, tiny, she was a, she tiny was a, girls. She was one of. So the we had all read Suzanne Farrell's like autobiography. Yeah, so I was one of the tiny girls in the. Yes. And we'd read her um, her autobiography, and so um, some of the other girls had remembered, especially this huge ring that he had given her. And so in the rehearsal, we said, <laughs> "Look at the ring!" <laughs> and everyone was looking at this huge. I think it was an emerald ring or something like that. So. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, he gave it a big one. Emerald? Yeah. It I was, don't know if it was Emerald. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was, an, it was an amazing introduction to his work. And then I've, I continued dancing in Boston with Vicki Simon. Taught, um, she taught Serenade when I did it later. And I did Stars and Stripes. I did The First Girl and I did The Pas de Deux. And um, I also did Theme and uh, Divertimento 15. I got thrown on opening night because someone broke her wrist oh in Serenade. <laughs> and I had been away. In Japan, was I was I there then too on the I, I rubies on the on the not. divertimento program? I hope not. Did no, Susie no. Handel stage it? Yeah, Susie Handel. I was there. Oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah. I hope I hope you, know, you, you I hope you didn't see. You were living see me there because in I I, no, I, I, didn't teach I literally went on stage <laughs> not knowing what the first step was. Well, I had a kind of an idea, so I was a little um, happy very musical. Da -da, just played. Da -da, yeah, so I was da -da, slightly da -da, da -da, a little bit late. Um, but I, I made it through the end of the ballet. It's not a very long ballet, but it felt like it oh, was a oh, long it's, it's ballet. Oh, it's long, and a lot of dancing, too. Yeah, there's oh, a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. dancing. What so does in... Balanchine mean to Americans? Well, it's, um, we adopted him when America was very happy to have immigrants. <laughs> and... <laughs> uh, and, um, <laughs> and he was... Yeah, yeah, he was an adopted American, like Stravinsky, um, like yes. Solzhenitsyn, like so many great and incredible musicians, even. And this was, he came to America. He did his first ballet serenade, you know, almost telling the story of how he's putting together a company when people come in late and people That's fall right. over. And the, it, it's, it's such a huge part of dance in America is really Balanchine. I mean, San Francisco Ballet was the first company, but I think the New York City Ballet is still what we think of when we think of dance in America. And I, I watched it on the public television when there was funding for public television. I watched the performances, great performances with New York City Ballet, and it, it always captivated me. It was so, so important. And, and I love the, the attack, and I love the, I think, the freedom of it and also the individualism but then again the cohesiveness of the court of ballet and the patterns that he makes it's almost like a chessboard the the movements are something there are you don't imagine that there are so many permutations and combinations but he's able to create them and it's just phenomenal and he was so american yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. How many different oh, he loved British, British. He loved westerns and he loved westerns and everything and he used to wear like a western garb and i just Divine. It was absolutely super. He was a uh, very American in many ways, you know. And how yeah. is his ballet different to British ballet, particularly being here? And you must go mm. between the two. Yeah. Can you describe the differences or yes. perhaps demonstrate some? Differences? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> she chances so. For own. instance, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, Ashton really liked a sort of a, a low arabesque with a very high head and a low arms and almost this sort of geometric shape. So that's that was, Ashton, that's Yeah, English. so that was, that was quite different. Whereas Balanchine wanted you to have, you know, absolutely, you take a, a normal arabesque and then you stretch it even further and you stretch it even further and you maximize the space completely. So that's another reason why he loved tall dancers is he loved the fact that they could eat the stage. <laughs> they could absolutely 
take and I suppose that's an, maybe an American trait of manifest destiny of taking over territory <laughs> <laughs> and, and so owning it. by too. Sorry? I said a short one. Yes, you know, exactly. Well, that, that was well, what, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean he, what, what he size. liked was yeah. people to move big. Move big. So yeah. it didn't yeah. matter what size you were, but you had to move right, you right. Know, big lunges, yeah. big le high legs, right. you know. So to me, it didn't matter so much, but he did like tall women. But he loved, he for instance, when yeah. he did Prodigal Son. Oh, yes. Oh, well, yeah. that he, was... He uh, wanted, this is what he wanted. To yes, have this yes. The power, of, uh, the power of a yeah. tall woman yeah. uh, with a short man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A lot of great women. A lot <laughs> with, a of small, great with a small man. <laughs> for tall women, a lot of great, yes, great, yes, great yes. roles. Oh, he did incredible parts yes, for yes, tall women. Yes. And he loved tall women, yeah. I and won't disagree, but he also liked anybody who could move or right. dance. Whereas, like whereas there have been very, very few um, celebrated Ashtonians who were tall, I suppose, <laughs> I would say. Whereas there are some amazing balancing dancers who are both petite and That's right. very But it is about tall. those big shapes. It's, it's about, yes, shapes. it's about expansiveness, not just bigness, I would say expansiveness. Yeah. So to have even a small stature, if you're able to travel and to take the area and to right. take your limbs as far as they'll go and to push right. your hips off balance and to do all of these it's basically movement you know his favorite dancer was Fred Astaire is that correct that's yeah. right yeah. that's right Fred so Astaire that, and Ginger Rogers that's what he that's what he yeah. loved he loved the ease yeah and the perfection and the perfection yeah, yeah. and the musicality yes <laughs> yes and so now you were staging the Balanchine Ballets. How did you get into that? Well, uh, I, 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 I'm trying to remember the year. I think it was around <laughs> 68, around that area, 68, 69. I had left the company, and I was actually working in Europe. And he sent me in 68 before I left, or no, after I left the company. I have to get these dates, sorry, forgive me, to Stuttgart to do Agon. I was the first person to teach it. And uh, that was the first company that actually did it. And then after that, he started sending me to all these places, like to do Four Temperaments and certain works. So I started very young with him coming to watch a lot of the ballets that I taught. And then I started directing, and he was my artistic advisor. And yeah, it was the most sensational part of my career to have him around all the time, and also to watch the ballets after I taught them and to tell me what he thought. And he was. Very critical, very, you know. <laughs> so I'm just saying he was not, you know, he w didn't go, oh, that's wonderful, thank you, bye, bye, bye. No, no, it was like, no, no, that's not right, and that wasn't good, and, you know, so I, it, at least that's very important that we know what he wants. That's why it's very important to get a person that maybe knew him to teach his ballets, except they're all, we're all dying now, so sorry, <laughs> forgive me. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not yet, no, not yet, you know, but, uh, but it's, um, it's getting less and less, let's say, you know. But Lelisa and I did work with him, and that's very important, I think, that we have uh, Mr. Balanchine in our minds the whole time. Vividly. You know, and he was such, oh, God, I'm so lucky. Uh, blessed. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. B. You know, I thank him every day, you know. So when you come to London, then, do the, do the Royal Ballet dancers adapt well to, oh, to yeah. what you're teaching? Yeah, you, say, you can answer that. The Royal Ballet. The Royal Ballet. <laughs> yes, they're wonderful. They're extraordinary. Yeah, all you have to do, it, it, like we were just saying, the movement, the musicality, the professionalism, I mean, it's a, it's a great company. You know, I, we would never, uh, by the way, I don't think Elise and I would say a bad word right now, and Kevin's <laughs> sitting in the audience, too. So. <laughs> I don't have anything bad to no, say. These no, 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 no. They're used right. to dancing the all of these different styles. That's right. That's right. Now, you know, may, maybe 50 years ago, not so much, but the, this royal ballet is is as adept at Balanchine as Wayne McGregor. That's right. As That's right. Chris Wheel, McMillan, they have uh, Crystal Ashton, Pike the names now. of all the studios, mm -hmm. everybody <laughs> um, that walk through these doors, because that's the way the world has become. For example, this evening. Yes. This is worldwide. The, it, the world has become so connected and so small that dancers now really have to be able to adapt to all of these different styles. And they've been doing Balanchine here for a very long, very long time, right? And yes, they have. So, they have. Um, and we don't meet with any resistance. Everybody absorbs it and enjoys it and wonderful people to work with. Yeah. 
So, Sarah, you find you can move between the roles? Yes, easily. yeah, I do. And it's true, you have to be adaptable at this point. Um, and everyone should hopefully have had some experience uh, in training with different styles. But absolutely, once you join a company, you have to be able to. And, and I, I want to say that, that we are so lucky to have, I think that's one thing that the Balanchine Trust does so well is they make sure that we have people who know the ballets, you know, possibly better than Balanchine would have been able to stage them because he couldn't remember all of his ballets. Not, no, he didn't remember. <laughs> he did. Okay, okay, never mind. Yeah. But 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 that's okay. But, well, he but knew he what trusted. he liked and what he yes, didn't like. He trusted, and you but, and you know that, and that's right. and you're passing that on, and um, and it, it is so valuable for us to have that connection. It's just one degree, you know, and the closer mm -hmm. that we get yeah. with Pat and Elise, the smaller that degree becomes. That, that keeps his choreography alive, keeping him alive, I believe. Because I think that keeping his presence around, it's, it, that's what we're talking about, you know? And that's why the ballets have to look a certain way and be a certain way, because he's watching us the legacy, all the time. The legacy, mm. it has yeah. to stay. Yes, that's right. And I don't know about you, you but I spend more time studying Yep. Than teaching. Oh yeah, I spend and a I'm lot of time. constantly learning. Even if I have taught the ballet before, either I That's get right. a hold of a a, a new video, but I'm not new, from an older generation, but new to me, I learn something. If I'm if I'm right. somewhere where Pat's staging something, I learn something. If I'm staging Jules somewhere and they just brought in, it was just Jacques and was I had never seen his what he had to contribute before. Oh, really? That was new. I've worked with Suzanne on diamonds a few times. I've worked with Patty and Eddie a mm. lot on rubies. I've worked, get to learn from Pat, even though I'm not working with her. I'm in the same place oh, and okay. learn Mimi and Violette quite a lot in emeralds. And so the, the, every time I encounter something <clears throat> from the time, I, I learn something new. That's lovely to hear. I've got one final question for you, Sarah. We've got the, the cinema performance April the 11th. Yes. Is there a different pressure to doing that? Well, if you, you, know, if you think sometimes the camera is going to go in very close to your face, there's a little bit of a kind of being pulled back from it. But no, you, you really can't think of it that way. You have, um, I know, you have a performance that's as important because every time I dance for an audience, that's something I take very seriously and um, no you and and we've started getting quite used to it here so yeah of course there's a, there are a few more nerves and mm -hmm. you know that there are many many more people than just the mm -hmm. the actual audience and there's also the um, non ephemeral nature of the performance because someone will probably illegally film it and <laughs> then put it up on YouTube so <laughs> you have something that's now there forever so that's something to you have a little bit of that in the back of your mind but but really you can't think of that well we can't wait for yeah. performance. thank you very much and thank, thank you. you for your wonderful stories thank you what an insight thank you, thank you very much thank a round of applause please for Pat thank you thank you thank you very much thank you Uh, well, I should tell you, actually, we were talking about Round the World and YouTube, and we're on YouTube at the moment. Uh, we are being watched by people in Singapore, in Germany, Brazil, Sweden, Wales, Palestine, Colombia, and the Dominican Republic. So hello and uh, welcome along, all of you watching, wherever you are. Uh, now, please welcome principal dancers Marianella Nunes and uh, Tiago Suarez. Here they come. Big round of applause. Wow. Hello. Come here for me. You two, lovely to see you both. So um, talk me through then. Do you remember the first time? We were just talking there about the first time dancing to Balanchine's work. Do you remember your first time? I do, actually. It was Agon. Um, Patricia Neary uh, got me ready for it. Uh, but now we were just talking before this, um, the first time we actually did Diamonds uh, Jewels, I mean, for the company, in 2007. Okay. And we have done it many times ever since. And um, um, I must say, I mean, since we did it for the first time, it really did become one of my favorite things to do. And I'm sure for Tiago as well, it's a very special piece. So every time we get told that it's going to be in the rep, I'm like, yay. <laughs> really, I could do this part of the day especially. Well, I the whole thing, really, for breakfast every day. I mean, I do <laughs> really love it. Yeah. And Tiago, when you've done something like that, how quickly is the recall of, of the all coming back to you? 
Well, the first time we did, uh, we did a, a very long process and we learned really well. So we really studied the material. So somehow that stays on you. Obviously, the, you know, we always have these incredible people that comes and give us a little bit of something different, So, which is always nice to have something fresh. But once you learn really well, it stays a little bit with you. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it now. Marianella and Tiago are going to rehearse Diamonds from Jules uh, with stager Elise Bourne. Elise is coming back again. And they'll be accompanied on piano by Paul Stobart. Thank you very much. Round of applause. <laughs> Okay, can I just, I'm just going to tell everybody that <clears throat> we addressed this part of a little bit today, a late afternoon, and um, I just got here yesterday, so there's not, I'm, I think, and they've danced it a lot, and they're perfection personified, so I'm going to try and find some fault with it. <laughs> but I'm not so sure. When you just get tired, then stop. If I don't stop you. <laughs> but maybe, uh, l uh, let me just remind you about the port de bras before we start, because we had a little nitpicking today, mm -hmm. just a little bit, and I just want to remind her about this. The yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry I'm in my practice clothes, but there you go. I've been here all day, so there you have it. Uh, Enjoy the diamond spot of dough. <laughs> no, we'll stop somewhere so that they can rest. Find How something. Yeah, uh, just a little before they come out, please. Right on the plank. May I stop here for one moment? Couple of small things. Um, for one thing, you may plie after, after this, right, no, after this. Fifth. Twice. Fifth. Fifth. Yeah, so it was, well, it's because it's a little, um, it could be a little softer, you know what I mean? Juicier. Right. Okay. And, and it's not brittle, you can't be brittle, but it. It could just meld a little better okay. if you have a plea. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Then, you're so beautiful. This is really rough. Uh, <laughs> all of this is good. This is still, I don't really know how to describe this port of raw, but it's just something a little, it's, it's a presentation. Do you know, maybe a little bit lower? I don't know. I don't know, but it's kind of like a, but I told you today, you're serving the caviar on a, <laughs> a tray to him. I don't, it's a visual in my head. I don't know, I don't know uh, how else to, because just a regular port de bra and put your palm up at the end is not the same. Okay, that it's mm -hmm. something a little different. Now, just got a little late with these lips. Okay. And the last one, and one, two, and then we saw an awful lot of your back. So should I talk to this? No, just, I think you just took a very long route. Okay. No, not that either. <laughs> he lifts you, you'll be just a little off the center here. And, yeah, right. not so far out and not so far back, do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And so that you're here before you stop, yeah. because you were still here and then you kind of just stop. Okay? okay? And I just thought I would just fix that before you repeat it now again because we have a repeat. So, so, do you want to go on? Yes. Could we go just a little before the plink when they settle?
Thank you. <laughs> it's late and they've been at it all day. <laughs> so, I think I know what's wrong. I think you're not starting it soon enough. So the coordination. I, that's what it is. Because you, then you don't get the whole count. One and a two by two, and you want to start three so and a four. Three. And, and you, you don't have to follow it. All to him. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then this time, do you remember, we're not going to go under, we're going to go up. Uh -huh. um, it's just a couple things from today. So it's you know, better. Yeah, a little plie. And then what? Hmm. Good. I didn't mean to ruin that for you. I know, I didn't mean to ruin it for you. You can still have a nice plie back, okay? I okay. didn't mean to ruin that for her. Fine. We had a moment today, but I didn't want to ruin it. Now. I get the sound. He's cracking me up today. <laughs> everything, everything is elegante. But taking this arm wrestling is not elegante. <laughs> no es elegante, es, es arm wrestling. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Please. Is the last one? Yeah, is... I, I have Pardon have me. Because I think I'm, I'm holding intact. Don't do that. <laughs> elegante, elegante. Elegante, yes, elegante. this way. And then, of course, that was very elegant and beautiful. <laughs> now, you go this way, then you go this way on head flat. Ah, okay, diagonal. Yeah, maybe a little higher. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one, maybe a little higher. Mm -hmm. And on a dive and up and land, and then again, let's make cross and cross and de da da. So it's a little more. So we'll call him that arabesque. Okay. But I think we can go on. Let's just go for I'm sorry. I'm waiting for the camera. And step, 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 arabesque. A little bit light. I'm sitting here smiling. <laughs> There's nothing like watching the joy of the dance <laughs> in you. <laughs> yeah, I, everybody is smiling. See? <laughs> it's contagious. Wow. I'm just sorry Mr. B can't be here to see this. No, hopefully he's seeing it somewhere. Um, beautiful. Now, but we're getting a little late. <laughs> we're getting a little late. And I don't really think it's too fast. Mm -hmm. And if you, once you come, if you want to do this way with your arm instead of just down, it's fine with me. Before he walks around you. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna go a little bit down. Remember the diamond shape. So right. just a little down and not so far back. Yeah. So one, two, three, four. We won't get that far. We'll try to get to here. Five, six, one, two, two. That's it. Okay. Yeah, down on. Da di slow di da dum bum step. That's right. So that also has a little bit of a juicy. Okay. We're gonna find uh di da dum right before the lift. Seven, eight, nine,
moment, you get a lot of rest. <laughs> you get a lot of rest. She didn't, you didn't take that, right? No. <laughs> now, I think you need to look up. Padasha. This one also, this arm is a little low. You can go a little higher. Follow, follow your hand, right? A little bit higher. And now here, you need to look up. For the big Padasha. Always. And to him, and you start back and follow your hand, and then to him, and now we actually we need to see your face. Yeah, I'm staying like this. <clears throat> okay. Okay, if you've so. got it, flaunt it. You got it. <laughs> okay. Was the music better? I th right. let's. Um, you want to do those again? You want to go on? Let's go on. I don't make him do those lifts again <laughs> late, and I, yeah. Tiago, don't let her take your thumb. I keep doing this. How are you going to stop it? How are you going to stop it? Tape it in? No, I don't think. Got a little late. Um, oh, look, it looks like me. Okay. <laughs> On this one, you should touch for a moment, right? Yeah, sorry. Uh, it's not horrible if you don't. Uh-huh. It's not horrible if you don't, but just for uh, there if she can take them the top so she can let go. Now this just run a little and then there's a chasse. You have a hitch kick going on. Uh, I, I do it. Okay. Yeah. So chasse. chasse and a devil pay and we look back and in up. So there's a little whoosh, so little a accent. Bit. A little embrace up and back and I think we just got late. Little bit. A little bit. So then by here you are a little bit late. Let's just hear the drama. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have a little getting into this? Come up one, run two, releve, go. his thumb again. <laughs> what do you have, a honey on there? <laughs> Did I grab his hand again? But it was the other hand this time. <laughs> okay, well, Mr. B used to say it's a good thing we only have two feet. Now I'm going to say it's a good thing you only have two hands. So that way. Hand, and he'll take your hand, and he'll elegantly do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And now, our next trick after the chasse, mm -hmm. can you do a little développé into that instead of just a poitrine? Okay. A yeah. little développé to that arabesque. This was nice. This was nice. I think we should go on. You got that. We have another rehearsal. Um, you got that. I think we should. He has those four threes. That's from, um, it's a little abrupt too. From this fourth, you can stay looking at him a little bit so we don't just get, although the back of the headpiece is really beautiful. I know. I but if like this, we still see it. It's okay. We'll get a little nose too, right? 
I know I want to take it home too. Well, I don't even have hair to put up like that. Okay. Um, you have to be careful with those headpieces. They catch on costumes. Okay. So you look at him a little, and then he can just turn her a little more gently. It was a little. But now he's got those four threes because he just played those. Two. Take her hands. Two. Top hand three. Two. Ponche four. Two. Three. Nice run. Just a teeny bit fast. Thank you. It's a teeny bit too fast. They can do it because they can do anything, but it just a tiny bit slower would be great, but we don't need to go back. Can remember to take your right arm off of his shoulder for the double pay? Uh, I took this one, so it's both. Yes. Oh, no, sorry. just the right, yeah, well, both, yeah. I want to focus yeah. on the right. But if you still need something, yeah, no, I think you're okay because you have to chasse out of it, right? Yes. Uh, are you breathing? Are you yes, rested? Yeah. Oh, you want to do the diagonal again? Uh, I love that step, so I can. <laughs> yes. This is your moment with whatever you want. A little before the diagonal is great. You know because she was smiling and enjoying it so much, but I can tell she's laughing because we had a small change right there this afternoon. So, and she forgot it halfway around, leaning backwards. She remembered, so that wasn't really the best moment to try to fix it, but she did. So that's why she's laughing. It was a little inconvenient in that position. I know. <laughs> You're still trying to devil pay a little bit too soon. Okay. So Don't you find that hard to bring her up like that? No. A little? When you fall back, oh, it's okay. when you fall back, here, on the way, you're already, you're here. Uh, and I, I think it's, I think you have to give fall back and then come up, on the way up, so on the I'm way up. 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 Yeah, too I'm soon, too I'm soon, there. yeah, a little later. Now, and run to fifth. Those are the words that you have to run more than two steps. Oh, it's really far and late. Well, I think you're allowed, it does, everybody gets there a little late, usually. Mm -hmm. State Theater, it's a huge <laughs> space, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay, but I think you, you only had like two giant steps and some bores, and I, I think Not you really can really run, good. run, run. Okay. It's okay, just run, mm -hmm. and then just take the fifth. There's lots of time. Yeah. And run to fifth, and take her. <laughs> okay. Let's do that. The end of the diagonal will be great. And then you're going to lean back. Your left arm on that side of him. Right. Okay. okay. Sorry. Five then six. Come up. And run. That's nice.
So we're light. A little, we're a little light. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Thank you very much, Elise. Amazing. Thank you as well. Marianella, wonderful, thank you. And Tiago, thank you. So lovely to see it in action. Before I got here, let's start doing some work on this ballet, and I just really want to thank Christopher Saunders and Anna Trevi. Thank you. I just wanted to <laughs> thank you. do that. Thank you. And these beauties. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this evening's performance. Remember, Jules will be on stage here at the Royal Opera House from the 1st of April, and it's in cinemas worldwide on Tuesday, the 11th of April. Visit the Royal Opera House website for all the details on that. All that remains now is for me to thank everybody that you've seen tonight. Thank you to Sarah Lamb, to Marianella Nunes, to Stephen McRae, to Tiago Suarez, Philip Cornfield, Rob Clark, Paul Stobart, Alan Watkins, and of course to Pat Neary and Elise Bourne. Round of applause for all of those people who saw the season. And a big thank you as well to our wonderful audience here at the Royal Opera House and to you wherever you're watching in the world. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>